Today, I want to talk about something that happens in the repair industry and might have happened to you or will happen to you. And that is when a connector gets damaged on a logic. Today, I have for our example, a Pixel 6 Pro that this has happened to. You as an individual or maybe a repair shop that you work at might not have the equipment or the skills to do it. So this might be something that's daunting to even think about considering doing, but it can save you a lot of grief to be able to have this ability to repair damages done on site so that you can get that phone fixed and back into the right hands. Now the process is fairly straightforward. Having a good soldering iron, and I like the curved tips for most applications, and a decent rework station. Now it doesn't have to be this one in particular, but I really like it. And having a curved tip as well makes it a lot easier when going into the microscope so that you're not bumping up against the microscope head. A brush of some kind, having some clean room wipes to not leave any debris behind to clean up the flux. A pair of fine tip tweezers as recommended. And having this clamping fixture makes a world of difference. And there are a few things that can be done throughout the process to make it smoother, like isolating the area that you're gonna be working on. Similar to what a surgeon does when they isolate where they are going to start their incision, we're going to do the same by applying something as simple as Captain tape. It's a high heat resistant tape that'll redirect the heat away from that particular area that it's covering. Adding too much heat to a logic board can also cause issues, especially if there is a chip that has underfill under or around it, which can cause issues as the solder might melt. And as it melts, it does expand a little bit and that expansion can cause squeeze out if the chip is secured down with underfill. So controlling the direction the air is flowing so that it's pointed and directed away from those components, keeping all of that in mind, is going to be crucial for having a successful connector replacement. The next thing that you will want to use is flux. Flux acts like a shield that protects the solder from oxidizing. And when solder is free from oxidation, it has the ability to move freely to certain surfaces that it'll stick to. Applying some flux to the connector and heating it up, we'll be able to get the general area hot enough that all of the solder under the, each of the individual pins on the connector melts, allowing us to remove the connector all in one go. Once it's removed, we'll let the board cool down and we won't disturb it in the process. We can then go over the pads and clean them up by removing the solder. In order to lower the overall temperature that each pad needs to get to, we can add some low melt solder. This is 138 Celsius solder, which is a solder that is fairly common in the repair industry with, with certain repairs, but it's a solder that is weaker and isn't recommended for connectors like this. So although we will bring the temperature down from this lead-free solder that's on the board from the factory, we will then want to remove it, which we do with wick. Adding flux and wicking away the pads using the proper amount of heat. We can freshen up each one of these pads to have a very small remaining amount of solder on them. Now I'm going to take some solder paste that is at 183 degrees Celsius, which is a higher melting solder, but not the highest like was on this board and is strong enough for connectors that are going to see action like this one. We'll add it to each one of the pads and we'll make sure that the amount of solder that remains on each pad is equal all the way around. There are some pads that are attached to the ground plane, which, which means they have more thermal mass behind them and therefore retain more solder. In those cases, applying additional hot air while using the soldering iron will allow us to remove the additional solder that they would otherwise have, making them equal to their neighboring pads. Having equal solder amount on each pad is crucial for when we go to apply our new connector so that there isn't any pad in particular particular that is keeping the that is propping the connector up what we want is for the surface tension of each pin to grab the solder that's under it pulling it down and sucking it as close if not in complete contact with the logic board 
throughout this entire process, Flux is going to be your friend. Once we've done that, we verified that each one of the pins is solid by going around and tapping on them with our tweezers, we'll then be able to add some solder to the grounding pads on either side of the connector. Now you may end up having to go back in with a soldering iron to touch up some of the pins. This is something that is sometimes inevitable, but you have to be careful so that the soldering iron doesn't melt the connector. Once we have the connector completely soldered on, we can clean up the area with isopropyl alcohol or our flux cleaner, which will help remove the flux much better and is what I recommend to use whenever we're cleaning up the flux throughout the entire process. Having the ability to replace a connector like this is going to save you time and probably a lot of money as sometimes when this happens, the only solution, if you can't fix it, is to replace the device. I'll have a link in the description where you can go to get all of the tools and supplies that I've shown in this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions regarding this process, and leave a comment as well as to what you'd like to see in a future video. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Anxiety, I need my space, I need my privacy, I need some silence. Please, you're all too loud, you don't speak quietly. Opinions violently thrown across every.